Is your world a litigious world where people are making trouble for everybody unnecessarily? Is your world a beautiful world where things are working out? Is your world a world that's all fraught with people fighting and contention? Or is your world a world of so much diversity and so much balance that out of it comes constant new ideas and the vortex for what's coming next? Which is your world? What path are you carving out? Is this book that you're writing coming out of the vortex where everything that you've ever cared about is in there without resistance? Or are you writing this book over here from this place of resistance where you're wanting to make sure that you get it all right? You see what we're getting at? If the book is coming from within you, then anything about it isn't something that you need to worry about. You'll be inspired to the words and the guidance and the book itself. Just like you found a trail through these beautiful woods and up these beautiful mountains with all of these beautiful vistas, you're going to find a trail like that in your vortex about the writing of the book about it too. Does that make sense to you? You're carving out those trails, just like you've already carved out these trails. When you were following those impulses, can you define in retrospect what made you want to go there? In other words, it wasn't a clear path. You had to sort of make your way through some brambles and briars and climb up some things that were not necessarily easy to climb up. So what we're talking about here, and we are so loving talking about this with you, what we're talking about here is the very finely tuned and very extraordinarily wonderful distinction between the path of least resistance and the path of most allowance. You didn't feel about that like we do, but we're really out here on the leading edge. <laughs> the path of most allowance, the path of most allowing who you are, because the path of least resistance would be black topped with signs. Everybody be on that path. That's not the path that you want to be on. You don't want to necessarily go where everybody's gone. You want to go where your unique inspiration from your unique inner being who understands your unique contribution to your unique vortex. You want to follow your path, you see. So your book would go something like, we'll just give you a little premise for it. I've been out in this area, in these woods and on these mountains for a long time. And I have had personal discovery that has taken me to heights of enjoyment that I can't even find words to describe. And so I wanted to write a book for you so that you could find those same heights of enjoyment. But I have a feeling that you're not going to enjoy just following my trail. So what I'm wanting to inspire you to is finding your own. And then... And then, and then. One day, Jerry and Esther were in Sedona, Arizona. It's a beautiful place too. Beautiful red rocks. Big, deep canyons. Energy vortices everywhere. It was in the fall. It was October. And they were coming down Oak Creek Canyon. They'd been in a little condominium that they stayed in often. And they were coming down Oak Creek Canyon at early afternoon and the light was coming through the canyon in such a way that the whole canyon was lighted up with this sunlight on these bright orange and red leaves on the trees and they pulled off at the side of the road and wept with appreciation about the beauty of the moment it was one of those convergences where they were tuned in tapped in turned on and their capacity to experience the beauty of it was heightened as such a way that they were intoxicated by it and they sat there and talked to each other about it and they did not understand then what the receiving mode was, what alignment was in that way. They didn't know about the convergence of energies. They had just been blissful and happy and the manifestation came on the heels of all of that. So they said, wow. And then they said, Jerry said, write down the date and the time. Esther did. All right. Next year on this day and at this time, we will come down this canyon with a bus full of everyone we love. They lived in Phoenix at the time. So one year later, they had a big party planned at that condominium. They invited all of these people. They got transportation. And on that day, at that time, they went down a very boring canyon. 
The leaves weren't the same. The light wasn't the same. The sun wasn't the same. Nothing was the same. They did it for three years in a row. <laughs> until they came to understand inspiration from that higher point of view is right on track all the time. And when you try to think your way through it too much by following protocol or following this or that, in other words, inspiration is highly underrated and misunderstood. And that's really what of all of the things that a really highly skilled climber would be wanting to talk about is your connection and then your connection and then because your connection to source energy connects you to your replenishing mode. It connects you to your energy. It connects you to your stability. It connects you to your clarity. It connects you to your precision. It connects you to everything that is important in climbing. And it also connects you to your capacity to see beauty for your capacity to know where the beauty is, to give you enough energy to get up over that ridge where the vista will really be there. You see what we're getting at? This is the book that you're writing. And there are so many beautiful places that you could take people. We really enjoyed this conversation. We think this is a really good time for lunch. There's great love here for you. We are complete.